Hello, community. Hello. Happy Valentine's Day. Do we need courage to love? And do we need courage in nonviolence? And why do we need courage in nonviolence? Well, the question should be why not? Doesn't it take courage to reach out to another and to accept another, to give up your time or the resource of your talents and treasures? to speak up and advocate for the good, the true, and the right, even to forgive and accept forgiveness, to say no to your want, but yes to the need of another. To love and accept takes massive, massive courage beyond the gifts of trinkets, petals, and fine wine. It's in the action and the small and the big. And as the beloved little woman of Calcutta would say, it's in doing the little things with great love. Recently, to a group of um, eighth and ninth graders, I had the wonderful opportunity to challenge and ask them questions from the point of an inspiration or inspiration quote found on a prominent sign in the area, which read, example is the greatest language anyone can read. And I asked them, what is your example in language? At home, with family, amongst your friends, in school, and in society, who are you? I asked them. In completing schoolwork and chores, in helping to look out for a sibling or siblings, are you a good example? Do you express your feeling and need to make life a little easier on your parents or guardian? whether through assuring them as they worry about you, in offering a hug just because, in lending a hand to clean up, telling them you appreciate all they do for you, saying the words, I love you, when they might be stressed or even laughing and just hanging out, or putting down your phone during meals and conversations and when you know they're trying to connect, or asking if they could put their own phones down because you need to connect. The power of presence takes courage and that courage lies in vulnerability. And that's how I challenge them and how I challenge you and us. For this, for this courage not lie in the face of adversity, in the face of difficulty, or even in the face of discouragement. In his talk to the high school juniors and seniors in 1967, tired though he was, Dr. King, challenge the, that generation in front of him, that generation that was his tomorrow and our today, he challenged them to live with commitment to the eternal principles of beauty, love, and justice. He challenged them to not allow anybody to pull them so low as to hate them or to lose self-respect that they do not struggle for justice. He said to them, you have a responsibility to seek to make your nation a great nation to live in and to seek to make life better for everybody. He said, we must not give ourselves to those things that will not solve our problems, referring to violence, rather to a method that can be militant, but at the same time, not destroy lives or property. And he made that famous call out to build, baby, build, and learn, baby, learn, so we can earn, baby, earn. And he was referring to the lose-lose equation of violence versus the win-win of nonviolence, restating the drive-in, the influence of, and the personal obligation to nonviolence. He confirmed for them that with a powerful commitment to nonviolence, I believe that we can convert the dark yesterdays of injustice to a powerful tomorrow of justice and humanity. And he charged them, let us keep going to what the goal of selfhood, realization of the dream of brotherhood, of course, he also meant sisterhood, to what the realization of dreams, the dreams of understanding and the dream of goodwill. That charge stands true for us today in our celebrations of Galentine's Day and Valentine's Day and weekend with our friends, our colleagues, our loved ones. Let's hold true to courage, courage and vulnerability, 
courage in the struggle for what's right, just, and true, and the courage to love. Have a love and courage-filled Valentine's Day. Until next time, my love. <laughs>